what did you what was your first discussion with Mr. Curry about this lawsuit? Object to the form of the question. Uh, well, our first discussion was letting them know that we had a uh, that Mr. Hyden had sent a letter to us to stop you know everything uh, cease and desist and basically discussed the letter that we were sent on November 22nd. Okay. And what did you tell Mr. Curry? I told him that I'm going to go speak with my lawyer and uh, I'll let him know what happens after that. Not to worry. Okay. And what was the first conversation you had with Ms. Dykus about this lawsuit? Same conversation. Was this a group conversation? Yes. Okay. Were all those people present during that conversation? Yes. Okay. At any point in time, did the ownership interest of Mr. Bucci change? We're uh, still looking at that at this moment. What do you mean you're still looking at that at this moment? Trying to figure out exactly what the total ownership interest is. We haven't completely figured that out. Okay. Well, when the company was formed, Mr. Bucci owned 50%. Correct? Yes. Did you ever give Mr. Bucci anything in exchange for any of his ownership interest? No. Did you ever enter into any agreement with Mr. Bucci whereby he would surrender his ownership interest? No. What's there to figure out? My capital contributions. Okay. Where is it that says that you should receive something for your capital contributions? Check to the form of the question. You can answer. There is nowhere. Okay. Well, to the extent there's somewhere that is it's a contention question, and if there's something in the statute that it provides for it, it's a contention question, so my objection is just noted. Okay. Well... Again, if you have a form objection, I appreciate you making a form objection. Anything beyond that is speaking objections are inappropriate. So you think that you made capital contributions to the company? Yes. Okay, when did you make capital contributions to the company? Throughout the entire time. Okay, when? Every sale that I made. Okay. You think a sale is a capital contribution? My commission from that sale was a capital contribution. Okay, What on what occasions did you not take the commission that you should have taken? Every commission. I put back into the company. Okay. When you say every commission, you never received a commission payment? No. Okay. Did you enter in any document with the company that detailed that you were not receiving commission, but instead were making those as capital contributions? It was a verbal agreement between John and I. Okay. Is there any document at all that memorializes that agreement? No. Is there any email that references that agreement? I don't recall at this time. Okay. You were entitled to take those commissions? Yes, and I, the agreement was that I could use uh, money if I needed to for any personal reasons or business reasons for from those commissions. I'm sorry, what? Why don't you re-ask the question? Do you understand yeah. the question? No, can you re-ask the question, okay. please? Well, you said that the understanding was that you could use money for any... <clears throat> Instead of taking my commissions, I let John know that, hey, when I need to use the card, if I need it for myself, I'm going to use it instead of taking the commissions. And he was in agreement. Okay, so instead of taking commissions, you were going to make personal purchases with company assets? Yes. Check to the form. Okay. All right. So, and, and there's, and, and you told your testimony is that Mr. Bucci agreed that instead of taking commissions, that you could use the company assets to make personal purchases. Yes. Okay. And there's no document that memorializes this. No. How did you track when you were using company assets to make personal purchases? In our accounting package. Okay, how did you do that in the accounting package? Owner expenses. Okay, so every time you used company assets for a personal purchase, it would be reflected in owner expenses? I believe so. Okay. Can you think of any instances where it was not reflected? I don't recall at this time. Okay. Well, you went to the strip clubs, right? We took a couple of the guys out, yes. Okay. And you build that to use it. You used company assets for that. That wasn't a personal trip. After we closed deals, I usually would take the guys out to a dinner, or we'd go out and have a few drinks, happy hour, 
the occasions John was there. So, okay, I'm sorry. So after you close deals, you would take the employees out. Yes. And purchase alcohol. And food. I'd always buy the first round. Okay. Purchase alcohol, food, and presumably lap dances as well. Okay. Check to the formula question. Okay. Well, what did you spend the money on at the strip clubs? Alcohol. Okay. You can see the amount. Okay. And what does the amount look like? Uh, one, round of, one round of drinks. Okay. Well... Did you understand that that was an appropriate use of company assets? Well, you know, I believe in taking care of my employees. And if I would ask, where do you guys want to go to celebrate? And if they had mentioned that we want to stop by this particular location, I would. You know, I, I feel like they did a really good job, and why not reward them? Okay. Did Mr. Butcher accompany you to these strip clubs? I don't recall. Well, how often was it that you went to strip clubs? A few times. Two, maybe. Um, okay. Now, do you have any understanding of whether or not it's appropriate under federal tax law to utilize company assets for uh, alcoholic purchases. I'm objecting to form a question and instruct you not to answer it. What's the why? why? He's got a Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate himself. You're asking him under federal tax laws whether he's making a, a decision to engage in conduct that might be violative of a federal tax law. You're not going to answer it. Okay, so let's let's be clear. I think he needs to actually invoke. I'm not. Sure. You're trying to invoke the fifth for him. I can. I'm his agent. I've okay. done it before. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I know. All right. So you. Well, let's make sure we understand this. Okay. So you're going to invoke the fifth. Well, then I'll ask a series of questions here, and if you're going to invoke, let, let's get that done. Okay. So, in fact, on literally thousands of occasions, you made personal personal purchases with company assets. Isn't that correct? was not person all personal. But many of them were, weren't they? Yes. Okay. You got your hair cut. Yeah. You bought a whole bunch of other stuff at Sam's Club. That was for the company. All of it? Not all of it, no. Okay. You bought a lot of personal items at Sam's Club as well, correct? I reject the form of the question to the extent you have something in particular that you're referencing versus a vague allegation that he bought personal items, then maybe the, the, the you'd like to refresh his recollection with the item, and that way we can cut to the chase. Okay, well. And if you're referencing a document, maybe we can identify it. Sure, and we'll get there. But I, 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 I was mistaken. I was under the impression that you were going to instruct him that you were going to instruct him based on the Fifth Amendment not to answer, and so Wait. that's why... Okay, well, your question called for his interpretation of federal tax laws and his conduct therewith, so... How many personal purchases did you make using company assets from 2008 until 2011? I don't recall at this time. Okay. Was it in excess of $100,000? I don't recall at this time. Okay. Was there a reason why you chose to use company assets to make personal purchases? That way I can make sure that the company had enough money and I didn't take my commissions every month and we made payroll. That was my m number one important thing. How often did you have verbal conversations with Mr. Pucci? Every day. Every day. But you never once put any of this in an email? No, I'm more of a hands-on, talk to you, to your face type of person. Oh, okay. Um, now these I'm going to mark uh, as Exhibit 1 the Bank of America and the FOA documents. And uh, as I informed counsel previously, we have burned the entirety of what we received from Bank of America to a CD. And we'll mark actually the CD as Exhibit 1. Um, the actual documents are available. <coughs> as a giant stack of stuff.
Why was the bank account repeatedly overdrawn in November 2011? I don't recall. Okay. Was that because you were writing yourself a number of checks in 2011, November 2011? Uh, I don't recall. You don't recall writing yourself a number of checks in 2011? Yes, I, I, did, I did write myself a number of checks okay. rather than getting payroll. And were you aware that that put the company in a position where it was overdrawn? Well, I would wait until my everyone was paid before I would cash my check. And we had a lot of expenditures at the time, and that's why I wrote myself a check rather than paying you know, everything up front. Now, there were a number of occasions where you wrote yourself checks for thousands of dollars, correct? Check to the form. You can answer. Correct. Okay. Why did you write yourself checks for thousands of dollars on numerous occasions? For uh, payroll, basically. Instead of running it through the payroll and paying the extra taxes, we uh, wrote myself a check and then I added it to my taxes at the end of the year. Okay. So let me take a step back. So you wrote yourself checks and then added, when you say you added the taxes at the end of the year, what do you mean? Instead of receiving a payroll check, so I didn't receive one pay, a check from payroll, I wrote myself the check for the amount and added that amount to my taxes at the end of the year as income. Okay, did you pay FICA on it and Social Security? At the end of the year, yes, in my taxes. <clears throat> Well, do you have an understanding that Social Security is collected on a per paycheck basis or on an annual basis? I don't. I don't know which one it's collected on. Do you know what a K one is? Yes. What's a K one? It's uh, something with business tax. What I'm going to mark as exhibit 10. Do you recognize what the mark as exhibit 10? Yes. Okay, what is exhibit 10? It's a K1 schedule. Okay, and what does it reflect? Uh, symmetric Engineering Group. Okay, for 2011? Yes. Okay, and it shows your income as being $17,754, is that right? For the business income. Well, was there other income that yeah. you earned from Symmetric Engineering? My salary. Okay, you think that's different than business income? I don't know. Okay. I believe so. Okay, so do you think that's reflected in some other document? It could be. Do you recognize 1741? Yes. What was 1741? Expenses. Okay. How do you know it was expenses? The amount. Okay. What was the amount? 500. Okay. Is there, it seems peculiar that you would have exactly $500 in expenses. It was a roundabout number that we, that, that was the amount that I got paid at Network Engineering I'm Solutions. A, I'm object to the final question. I don't think a question was asked, asked so I, I, I'm, uh, Maybe, maybe you can rephrase it. Okay. Well, why was it that you received a check for five hundred dollars for expenses? Okay. How often do you receive that check for five hundred dollars? Uh, usually every month. Okay. What determined the amount of five hundred dollars? It was uh, a number, the same number I would get at Network Engineering Solutions. Okay. And it was just a five hundred dollar expense for mileage, which I would go over some months and some, some months under. Well, did you keep a mileage log? No. Did you investigate as to whether or not you were required to keep track of your mileage to receive a mileage reimbursement check? No. Do you know, as we sit here today, whether or not you're required to keep track of your mileage to receive a mileage reimbursement check? No. As CEO, do you think you should have investigated as to whether what the requirements were to receive a mileage reimbursement check? Yes. But you chose not to? Yes.
by choosing to receive a mileage, was it for other things other than mileage? For uh, mileage and, and gas. Okay, but you frequently charged your gas to the company card, right? On occasion. Well, I mean, frequently. We could go through those records. I mean, there's literally probably hundreds of times that you charge gas to the company card, right? It was the same amount I would get from the other company. I, it was agreed upon that that would be the amount of expenses, whether I went over or under, that was the amount agreed upon. With who? With John. When? In the beginning of the company. He tends to forget. Okay. Well, is there any document that details that? No. We were a verbal company, so we were, were new at this. We, were, we, we didn't document everything, we didn't micromanage everybody. This is the way we did it, and this is the way I, we, we ran our business, and this is the way that we were successful. Okay. <clears throat> well, you understand that, do, do you understand that George uh, Lokiatis and the company are two different things? Yeah. Okay. And did you understand that your assets were not the same thing as the company's assets? For the most part. Were there, were there areas where you were confused as to whether or not something was the company's asset? My commissions, that way I never took. The only way, only way I took them was through uh, using the card, and that was agreed upon. Okay. But, that, but this $500 check, that wasn't part of using the card, right? No. And this was going on for three years, so I don't know where it suddenly appears. You think you were taking, okay, well, let me ask you. Is it your belief that you were taking payroll in this same manner for three years? No. Okay. For the year of 2011, and a little bit at the end of 2010. That was the time when you started taking payroll in this method? Yes. Okay. Now, prior to that, were you receiving these $500 reimbursement checks? Yes in payroll and payroll or? in my payroll there was a payroll and there was a five hundred dollar non non-taxable expenses that I got from the beginning of the company or when we went to payroll okay and but those were you were not required to provide specific itemized statements as to what your mileage were to receive those reimbursements correct no okay. and you were charging your gas primarily to the company card correct yes It was a reward for doing something. Doing what? I don't remember at this time. Finishing up a contract, fin finishing up a project. I'd like to reward my employees. And yourself? And myself, yeah. I got my car cleaned. It's a big crime. Well, you utilized company assets to do that. Which I was entitled to. <clears throat> Everything I did was for the company. I wanted to make the company money, so I got my car washed. I don't know how that's a big deal. But how did getting the car wash make the company money? It didn't. It cost the company I, money. It cost the company money, but in the end, I did something that I didn't get reimbursed for. Worked late. I got my car washed instead. Okay. Well, you were paid a salary, right? Correct. Som sometimes. There's times where I didn't get paid. Made sure everybody else got paid first. Okay. I never asked that of anyone else. Do you believe that that entitles you to have your personal expenses paid by the company? A car wash, yeah. Okay. Well, where do you draw the line? I, I don't know. Okay. So you think, but you think it was appropriate to use company resources to get your car washed? Uh, yes. A lot of CEOs get their car washed from the company. Okay. I didn't see how that was a big deal. Okay. And if, and if someone else would have asked me to get their car washed, I would have gladly paid for it. But. Okay. Well, and you thought you were entitled to make your purchases at Sam's Club on the company, right? Yes. Okay. And you thought you were entitled to utilize the company card to fill up your gas tank every time you needed gas. It wasn't every time, but yes. I mean, literally hundreds of times. You know how much I drive? That was my question. Hundreds so. of times. Sure. Okay. Fill up at least three, every three days. Okay. After you changed his email at the end of one day, did you ever send an email to, to any private or personal email accounts, Mr. Gucci? No. Do you know if he had any other email accounts? Yes. Okay, did you know the, what those email accounts were? Uh, no, not off the top of my head. But at the time you did? 
they were written down somewhere. Okay. Was there a reason why you chose not to send an email to any of those other accounts? Because I, I left messages on his voicemail. He needed to call me and man up. What do you mean man up? For him to pick up the phone, I left several messages. I didn't feel that I needed to waste my company's time and my own time emailing his personal account when it wasn't personal, it was business. So I left him, on, I left him a voicemail to call me back at the office or on my cell phone. Well, you, at that time, you had already shut off his email access, though, correct? I changed his password. Okay. But you didn't tell him what the new password was. He never called me back. Okay. You understand that there are other ways to communicate with people other than a telephone, correct? Correct. And you chose not to utilize any of them. He chose not to call me back. Okay. Sir, the question is, you chose not to utilize any method other than leaving a voice voicemail. Correct. Okay. Did you know where Mr. Bucci resided? Yes. Did you have a motor vehicle that time? Yes. Could you have driven a motor vehicle to his residence? I was going to. But you chose not to? Correct. <coughs> Who made the decision as to whether or not Mr. Bucci was going to be written up on occasion? It was mine and my uh, vice president of the sales position. Okay. Did you ever write yourself up? No. Was there ever any occasion where you felt that you should have written yourself up but chose not to? No. Have you ever engaged in any misconduct since you've been at Symmetric? No. How much income did the company earn from Ultimate Home Health Care? Under $2,000. You utilized your work email to send explicit photographs of yourself, of your genitalia, to Ms. DeLeo, correct? Yes. Okay. And you received on your work email explicit photographs of Ms. DeLeo's genitalia as well, correct? Yes. Did you think that was an appropriate use of company resources? An objective on that question. You can answer. No. Did you write yourself up? <clears throat> no. Was there a reason why you chose not to write yourself up for an inappropriate use of company resources? No. Okay. Did you tell Mr. Bucci that you had used company resources to email explicit photos of your genitalia to um, Ms. DeLeo? No. Did you tell Mr. Bucci that Ms. DeLeo had emailed explicit photos of her genitalia to you? No. Was there a reason why you chose not to do that? No. Okay. Well, as the CEO of a company, do you think it's appropriate to have employees utilizing their company email to send explicit photographs of their genitalia to other people? Can you rephrase the question? Sure. You were CEO of the company. Do you think that it's appropriate for an employee of the company to utilize their work email to send explicit photographs of their genitalia to other people? No. Does the company have an employee handbook, or did the company have an employee handbook at that time? No. <clears throat> Why didn't the company have an employee handbook? Because most of the things that we do were verbal. And being that, you know, we all were first time at a business venture like this, you know, we learn as we go. And now, you know, we're implementing those things. What things? Employee handbooks, contracts. Uh, if there ever needs to be an operating agreement, things of those nature. Okay. You've never heard of an employee handbook before November of 2011? Of course I have. Okay. Well, as CEO of the company, whose responsibility was it to have uh, policies in place? Uh, we didn't have a particular person. Okay. Well, ultimately, CEO, that would have been your responsibility, though, right? Correct. Because you were the chief executive officer. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, and I see here $104.48 at Tokyo Japanese Seafood. Do you see that? Yes. What was that for? I don't recall. Okay. Was that reflected in owner expenses? I don't recall. Okay. How about um, $72.75 at Universal Fine Wine? Was that reflected in owner expenses? Yes. Okay. Was that reflected as income earned by you on your federal tax return? Object to the form of question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not one, it's not relevant. Number two, uh, it's, he's got the Fifth Amendment. 
Okay, so let, that's not a form objection. If you're instructing him not to answer based upon the Fifth Amendment, then that's not a form objection. That's instruction not to answer based upon the Fifth Amendment. Is that what you're doing? Are you instructing him not to answer based upon the Fifth Amendment? You're continuing to engage in a line of questioning on his personal tax returns, and what he does has nothing to do with his, this entity and how he claims deductions or how he claims expenses. You're continuing to harass him about those things when you know they're not proper. Counsel, if, if he had not used corporate assets to make these purchases, it would be, you would, I would suggest submit that you might have an argument, but where he used corporate assets to make purchases at wine stores and strip clubs, those are totally appropriate areas of inquiry. A $68 charge, you keep referring to strip clubs, there's one $68 charge, but nevertheless, if it's identified as an owner expense, the relevance of questioning him and continuing to question him and badger him about the way he filed his tax returns, I would suggest is highly inappropriate. You know it is. It has nothing to do with this litigation. I, I disagree, and there are okay. actually two charges, at least two charges on here for strip clubs, uh, and I, I disagree entirely with your characterization. I'm going to continue to ask questions. I'm trying to figure out. I'll continue out. to make those appropriate objections. Okay, well, that's fine. If, and I, just so we're clear, your instruction is as to universal fine wine, the $72.75, and whether or not that was reported as income by him on his federal tax returns, you're instructing him not to answer that question based upon the Fifth Amendment, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, as well as form. Okay. With respect to bare assets, $68 spent at bare assets. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Was that reflected as an owner expense? No. Okay. What was that reflected as? Uh, taking the employees out. Is there a category in the accounting software called taking the employees out? Employee meetings. Was Gina invited to this meeting at Bear Assets? No. Was there a reason why she wasn't invited? Um, I don't recall. Do you think it's appropriate to have business meetings at strip clubs? Object to the form of the question. You can answer. It's not. It's a reward as we're closing a deal. We, you know, we we took them out. They had a couple drinks. I left. I left them there. So. Okay, as do you celebrate with your employees? As CEO of a company, do you think it's appropriate to have employees having meetings or parties or whatever it is you want to call that at strip clubs? Object to the form of the question. Mm -hmm. If I did it all the time, yes, it would be inappropriate, but I only did it a couple times. Okay, so at what point, how many times? does it take before it becomes inappropriate in your mind to take employees to strip clubs? Object to the form. I don't have a number in my head. Okay. Well, would it be inappropriate to take them to strip clubs a hundred times? Object to yes. the form. But not three or four? No. So somewhere between three and four and a hundred, it's inappropriate? Object to the form. You can answer. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now there's a two hundred dollar withdrawal on September twelfth. What was that for? I don't recall at this time. Was that reflected as an owner expense? I don't recall. Did you ever withdraw cash for your own personal usage? No. So every time you withdrew cash, it was for a business purpose. That I recall, yes. Okay, and there would be an associated entry in the software that would reflect exactly what that money was spent for, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, Wild Fish Nightclub, what is that? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a nightclub. Okay. Where's that located? It was located on US-19. Okay, is it still there? No. Um, why is there a $26 charge to company credit card on September 12th uh, at Wild Fish Nightclub? That I don't recall. Okay, would that have been reflected in the owner expenses of the company? I don't recall. Did you have a discussion with Mr. Bucci about going to the Wild Fish Nightclub on September 12th, 2011? I don't recall. What was Pub Tampa on the next page? On uh, 283. Did you see that at the top? 
Pub Tampa, $52.80 on September 13th. That was a uh, that was a personal. Okay, so you used the company card for your own personal expenses. Yep. Okay. And was that reflected in owner expenses? Yes. Okay. And was that reported on your federal income taxes as income to you? Uh, all right. Here's here's the, what we're going to do. We're going to stop that line of questioning because it's not appropriate. And you continue to ask him questions that are inappropriate. You know the objection. It's a standing objection, so it asks you respect his rights not to have to answer that question. Again, it's not relevant. It's 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 a continued badgering about the same issue about his personal tax returns, which is not an issue in this case. And you should you, you, you should know that, Council. I'm I'm not badgering the witness, and I would simply ask that if you have an objection, you make the objection. If you're instructing him not to answer based upon Fifth Amendment, that you just say I instruct him not to answer based upon Fifth Amendment, and we'll move on. But I think that not all of these apparently are. I, I was. It appears to me that, in fact, all of these are personal expenses. But he's saying that some of them aren't. So I have to go through and try and figure out which times it was that he used the company credit card personally and which times it was that he used the company credit card for some sort of business purpose. And then how it was that those were accounted for. Can, can we can we go off real quick? Sure. All right. Uh, we have the regular time is uh, 1035. All right, let's take a break. Royal Palace Thai Restaurant. What was that? That was a personal expense. Okay. And was that reflected as owner expenses? I believe so. Okay. How about World of Beer? That was a uh, business. And what did you do at World of Beer? Uh, we went to Happy Hour. Okay. Who went to Happy Hour? A few of the employees. And you used the company credit card for that? About the first round. Okay. What is Planet Beach? It's a tanning salon. Okay, was that personal or business expense? Personal. Okay. Was that reflected as owner expenses? I believe so. Okay, so you, you had a tan? It was a package. Okay. Now, Planet Beach was owned by your girlfriend at the time, right? Ex-girlfriend, yeah. Well, okay. And uh, did you... Did your tax documents reflect that you had received uh, a benefit of $130 from the company for use at Planet Beach? Jackson. Are you going to instruct them not to answer? Instruct them not to answer. Okay. Again, based on the Fifth Amendment, right? Correct. All right, now, Yard of Ale. What was Yard of Ale? Uh, that was a personal expense. Okay. How do you know that Yard of Ale was a personal expense and World of Beer was a business expense? Because they're in two different locations. Okay. So, do the did you uh, receive uh, on your tax documents the reflection that the sixty six dollars and thirty six cents at Yard of Ale was uh, income to you? Yeah. Again, based on the Fifth Amendment, you're talking about. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a hundred dollar ATM withdrawal. What was that for? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, if there was a specific business purchase associated with that, there would be a corresponding receipt in the records of symmetric engineering, correct? Yes. Okay. And if there isn't a corresponding receipt in the records of symmetric engineering, can we assume that that was a personal cash withdrawal for you? Uh, yeah. Okay. So every time there's not a specific receipt associated with a cash withdrawal, that was just money that you took out, correct? No. Okay, well then, how do we know if there's not a specific receipt associated with it when it was that you, it was just money that you took out versus when it was that there was a purchase associated with it? Can you rephrase the question? Sure. My question is, how do we know, well, is for every instance where you took cash out of the business, through an ATM withdrawal, is there a receipt? There should be. Okay. If there is not a receipt, how do we know what the money was spent for? I don't know. Okay. Are, were there ever any occasions where you took ATM withdrawals of cash that was not for a specific business purpose? I don't recall. So that could have happened, you just don't know? I don't recall.
So you don't recall any instances where you took out cash, or it may have happened, but you just don't recall as we sit here? I don't recall as we sit here. Okay, so that may have happened, <coughs> you just don't know. Okay. Well, how about courtside grill? What was that? That was lunch for the employees. Which Mr. could have been Mr. Bucci being there. We went there a lot. Okay. Um, do the <clears throat> did your tax records reflect that you received the value of that lunch? Object to the form, Fifth Amendment. Okay. Um, you no, know, just you know what. what Okay. Now, with respect to uh, famous pizza home, do you see that? Yep. What was that? That was a lunch for employees. Okay. Um, and does the who was present at that lunch? I don't recall. Okay. Was that a meeting? That was the work through lunch. We okay. would we would buy it and they would continue working. So you brought pizza into the office? Yes. Okay. And the McDittons Irish Pub. What was that? That I don't recall. Okay, was that a personal purchase? I don't recall. Okay, do you know if that was reflected as income that you'd received in the tax records of the company? I'm sorry, what's the question? I was asking about the McDinton's Irish Pub mm -hmm. and whether or not that was reflected in the tax records as income received by Mr. Lachiris. Object the same objection. I mean, the sword cuts both ways. Obviously, if if if, if your client received a benefit that wasn't attributed to his tax returns, uh, I would assume you make the same objection. But uh, to the extent the continued line of question asks for his personal tax returns and his filing decisions or his accountant's filing decisions, um, we, we maintain the same objection to whether it's applicable or not. I, I just don't know at this time. But the Fifth Amendment. But just so we're clear, counsel, it wouldn't only be the personal tax returns; it would also be the corporate returns. But that's okay. Um, Koto, Japanese Steakhouse, what was that? Was that a personal purchase? That one I don't recall. It may have been. Okay. Do you know if that was reflected as income received by you? You know? Yes or no? No. Now, um, who at the company had responsibility for the preparation of the income tax returns? Um, our accountant. Okay. But who at the company? Had responsibility for transmitting those materials to the Gina Dykus. Okay. And who did Miss Dykus report to? Me. Okay. Did Mr. Bucci have any role in supervising Miss Dykus? No. Okay. Do you recognize what's been marked as Exhibit 13? Yes. What is Exhibit 13? It's communication uh, that I forwarded from Gina about uh, Bank of Alert changing password. Okay. And what was the alert? That the password had changed. Okay. And that was Mr. Bucci changing his password? Changing the main account's password, yes. Okay. And you see, how the hell did he have access to online banking? Gina, yes. Which, what does that mean? She wanted to know how he had access. Okay, because she didn't believe that he had access to online banking? Correct. Okay. When you say he had access a long time ago, it's not my password, it's his. What does that mean? He changed, I, I believe that if you change any of the passwords, that everybody gets emailed or the main account gets emailed. Okay, but this wasn't Mr. Bucci changing your password, it was his password, correct? Correct. Okay. So Ms. Dykus didn't know that Mr. Bucci had had access to online banking, is that correct? Correct. Okay. She didn't remember. Okay, well why did you instruct her to get the checkbook, your card, and the latest statement, the Fed ID paper, so we can control everything? Why did you instruct her to do that? Uh, I spoke to my previous attorney and he said to uh, 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 sorry. No. Okay. Okay. Why did you choose to do that? To make sure that nothing was uh, compromised. Okay. But up to that point in time, Mr. Bucci hadn't taken any money out of the accounts, correct? Correct. But you had. Correct. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, correct? Correct. Money owed. 
pursuant to what written agreement? To a verbal agreement. Okay. Now, <clears throat> did you go to the bank on November 30th, 2011? I don't remember if that was the date, but we did go to the bank, yes. Okay, and what did you do with the bank? Uh, we told them that we had an issue with our partner, we were both the signers, and we needed to take a signer off. Okay, and what did the bank tell you? They said, well, we can do that, and they did it. Okay. Did you tell them you had the authority to take Mr. Bucci off the account? They didn't ask. They saw that we were both signers. Okay. Well, what authority, on what authority did you take Mr. Bucci off the account if you were both 50% owners of the business? To protect the business, to make sure I wasn't aware he's a, you know, he's a, uh, a criminal and I don't know what his action would have been. So I just did the best I could for the company to protect it. I don't know if he would have taken money out and I couldn't have made payroll. He was trying to freeze our assets. He, was trying, he froze our uh, uh, accounting. We couldn't use our payroll company. We had to write checks. We had to tr switch payroll companies. So he was doing things to stop us from doing business. Okay. And again, just so we're clear, the only person who had taken any money out of the company was you, correct? Correct. Okay. And did you think that Mr. Bucci was going to be like you and was going to take money out of the company despite the fact that there were no written documents allowing for him to do that? I didn't know what he was capable of. Okay. Well, how did Mr. Bucci know what you were capable of? Yeah, he knew what I was doing. He's had access to this account since day one. It's not my fault he didn't look and see or even try to question me. Okay. So should Mr. Bucci have questioned you about your repeated use of company assets for personal purchases? He knew that we had an agreement that I would use the card when I needed to for my commissions. Did he understand the scope upon which you were going to do that, that it was going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of purchases? Did he understand? Object, or not object to the form. Okay. Well, did you ever tell him, hey, John, I've spent over $100,000 on personal purchases or words to that effect? No. Did you, were you aware of the scope of these personal purchases that you made with company assets? I would try to track it in my mind, but no, not the total amount. What was your sense of what it was when you were tracking it in your mind? It was all my sales that I would bring in, the amount of money that I would bring in for services. Uh, at one point, I was bringing more than 50% of the company's money in myself. Okay. And you felt you were entitled to that? Because of our verbal agreement, yes. Well, you thought that that John wasn't carrying his share of the weight, right? Absolutely. That's what you said earlier? Yes. Okay. And you didn't think it was fair that he owned 50% of the mm -hmm. company when he wasn't carrying his fair share of the weight, right? Correct. Okay. And so you decided that you weren't going to let that stand anymore, right? I don't know if that was the exact thought. No. Objective form. But something to that effect, right? Something. Was it different from what I described? No. All right, it's 5 o'clock. Uh, we're not quite done for today, but I'm not going to be able to continue today, so we'll suspend the deposition and return at a future time. We are off the record. The time is 4.59, and this concludes this deposition. Basically stating that John is no longer a managing member of Symmetric Group. Okay, and it also says that if they customer once, they can have Mr. Bucci continue to service their account, right? Yep. Okay. And you were CC'd on that message, correct? Correct. And did you ever take any steps to inform the customer that that was in fact not accurate? No. Did you ever discipline Mr. Curry for informing the customer of that fact? Verbally. Okay. But you never told the customer that, did you? No. He was the account manager. Okay. And so he had the ability to make that decision, correct? Somewhat, yes. And he did? Yes. Okay. And when you filed, or when your counsel filed this counterclaim, were you aware of the existence of this email where Mr. Curry had specifically said that we can have John continue to work with you on any service issues? I read the email, but I didn't read it thoroughly. Okay, but you didn't, and did you respond to the client and tell them that Mr. Curry was acting outside his responsibilities? No. Okay. And is there a document where you disciplined Mr. Curry? No. Okay. You orally told him? Yes. <clears throat> so
So Mr. Curry was the VP of sales at the company, right? Yes. Okay. And he specifically told the customer that you can continue to have John work on any service issues, correct? If they would like, yes. If they would like. Based on that, how is it inappropriate for Mr. Bucci to service that account? How is it inappropriate? Yes. Well, if your if your vice president of sales specifically stated that the customer could choose to have Mr. Bucci continue to service his account, if that's what they wanted while they were contractually agree uh, bounded to us, then that's what they wanted to do. They could have Joe Schmo come and service their stuff as long as they were continue to make their payments. That's you know that's what that's what the customer wanted. Right. Could have been their next door neighbor for all they care. Right. But what I'm asking is. You agree that Mr. Curry specifically told the customer that they could choose to have Mr. Bucci service their account? Yes. Okay. And that was prior to Mr. Bucci actually servicing the account, isn't that correct? That was during, that was after okay. and during. And during. Or after the initial uh, lawsuit, or okay. the first letter, excuse me. But prior to the formation of B4 Group, correct? Yes. We actually also said that if you go this route, we will have to have you sign a release from us stating that you are aware of John's non-involvement with Symmetric. It happens to be resulting of wrongdoing. SEG is not responsible. Okay. So that was the only condition was that he had to sign that they were... We were trying to avoid this happening, and the customer wanted to do it. So we wanted some kind of agreement, but they never gave it to us. So... You know, it's that we gave them the uh, the opportunity to call us and have us take care of their issues, but they decided to keep calling John. We can't stop them from calling John. Okay, but well, well, sir, you understand that you're suing Mr. Bucci, correct? Yeah. And you understand that part of your claim is that somehow Mr. Bucci did something inappropriate with respect to Carlin Realty, correct? Correct. But your vice president of sales specifically told the customer that we can have John continue to work with you on any service issues, correct? Yes. Okay. What is it that you think, in light of this email, in light of Exhibit 12, what is it you think that Mr. Bucci did that was inappropriate? He took the customer. After your vice president of sales told him... Correct. He was doing work for them. By, uh, with them asking him to perform the work, but then he formed B4 Group and took them all off of our books and onto his. Okay, but prior to let's let's take a step back. Prior to November, excuse me. Prior to March 27th, 2012, from November 11th, 2012, till March 27th, 2012, how much compensation did the company pay to Mr. Bucci for work done for Carlin Realty? None. Why was that? Because he wasn't he wasn't uh, working with us. I thought you said he was providing services to Carlin Realty. That was between John and them. Was it? We gave them the option of using us and, and doing the same procedures every other customer does is by calling into our help desk and us taking care of them. But they wanted to do their route. They kept paying us, so we kept taking the track. Okay. We, we tried a million times over phone calls to get them to not use John, but they wanted to continue to use John. We couldn't stop them. What I'm trying to understand, though, is what is it that you believe? So, but you made a decision not to pay Mr. Bucci any money after November 2011. Correct. Okay. And why was that? Well, the first thing is how could we track what work he actually did? He could have just shown up there and hung out for three or four hours. There was nothing that he could put his time into for us to know what we can compensate him for. Because you had locked him out of the computer system by changing his I password. I changed his password to his computer system. That's it. He had access to other people's email addresses. And he had access to a symmetric account where he was able to get a lot of these emails that happened prior after the fact. Okay. 
So now, he was, in essence, locked out. He just didn't have his password. He could have taken the upon himself and, with that symmetric account, changed his own password, but he did not. So you tell me why. Okay. Now, did you tell Mr. Curry that he could inform clients that John Bucci was a silent partner? No, I don't recall saying that. Okay. Why do you think Mr. Curry said that Mr. Bucci was a silent partner? Check the form. I don't know, I'm not Mr. Curry. Okay. Well, did you ever use the term silent partner when referring to Mr. Bucci? I don't recall. So you might have? I don't recall. Now, the prior to March 27, 2012, Carlin Realty continued to pay Symmetra. Correct. Okay. It was only after March 2012 and this email from Mr. Curry that Carlin Realty stopped paying Symmetric, correct? No. Okay, when did they stop paying them? I don't recall. Was it possibly after B4 was uh, formed? So, even sometime May, June, July was when they finally stopped paying? I believe so. I'd have to look at my uh, records. Okay. Did you ever go out and meet with Carlin Realty? No, I didn't. Was there a reason why you chose not to do that? Uh, Javon took care of it. Did Mr. Curry go out and meet with them? Yes. Okay. And what did they tell him? Before, what date are you referring to? Well, at some point after this email of March 27, 2000. Joseph and uh, Joseph Thomas and uh, Javon Curry went out there and met with them and tried to get them to stop using John and use us for on-site services. The other thing you're not thinking about is we do managed services, which we have agents install on their systems that take care of those computers 24 hours a day, monitor their systems. So there was a lot of work done that was not performed by Mr. Bucci, that was performed by Symmetric through our software. Okay. When you say performed by the software, you mean automated services that were being provided? Correct. That's what they pay for. Okay. You don't mean a technician going out and doing things or logging into their system remotely? And doing there were several occasions that uh, people did log into their system remotely. Okay. When? I don't recall the exact dates. We'd have to look at our ticketing system. Okay. Now, but Carlin Realty continued to pay Symmetric. Correct. Did Symmetric perform any services for Carlin Realty after they stopped paying? After they stopped paying, no. Okay. Now, The company, Symmetric Engineering Group, changed banks, correct? Correct. When did that happen? I believe December or January. Of what year? Uh, either December of 11 or January of 2012. Okay, why was it that you changed banks? Uh, we were trying to protect the company's assets. How were you trying to protect the company's assets by changing banks? Because John kept logging into the bank account and changing our password, so we had no access to know what funds were in the account. Okay. Did Mr. Bucci take any funds out of the account? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But you did? Yes. Repeatedly? Through my commissions. But Mr. Bucci took no funds out of the account? 
only his paycheck and expenses. Okay. And anything he we did give him money some time a couple times for uh, to pay things, but reimbursement. After November, whatever day it was that you shut off his access in November of 2011, Mr. Bucci continued to have access to the bank account, correct? Yes. Okay. But he didn't take any money out of the company, did he? No. But you continued to take money out of the company, didn't you? Yes, I was working. And there were no written documents detailing your commissions that you claimed were due, are there? Written documents? Yes. There's, in our accounting package, there's my sales report, which we've provided. But there's no written pay plan anywhere in existence? No. Well, you also sent emails to Mr. Curry in March about alternative careers for Mr. Bucci, right? Yep. Yes? Yes. Okay. Why did you send emails like Exhibit 6 in March of 2011 to Mr. Curry about alternative careers for IT workers? I sent this as uh, I send this articles from this Tech Republic all the time, so this one just happened to be that, and I made a humorous joke. Okay, what was the humorous joke? There was a good article for John. Okay, how was that humorous? Ten alternative careers for burned out workers. Okay, that just seemed what he was. That was is what he was doing. He seemed burned out. He seemed like he needed a change, so it was more of a joke than anything. So. Well, do you think that it was appropriate for a CEO of a company to be exchanging jokes with a subordinate employee about the other owner of the company being burned out? Object to the form. I don't. I don't see how this is, you know, putting anyone down. It was a joke. If you would see what his jokes would have been and his that he would send to people, uh, naked women and jokes about. Uh, you know, handicapped people, things like that. This is not bad at all. Well, are you aware of any occasion for Mr. Bucci emailed photographs of his genitalia to a customer? I don't know. Object to the form. It wasn't a customer that genitalia was emailed. Are you referring to the prior t yeah, he testament? Said, he said she was a customer. After the fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you draw a, mo a line in, in your mind as a distinction between it's appropriate to use your company email to email pictures of your genitalia to people who are subsequently going to become customers? I, that thought didn't cross my mind. Okay. Nor did I think she would become a customer at that point. So. So is that why you emailed her a picture of your genitalia using uh, your company email address? Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't see why that's a big deal. You don't see why that's a big deal, sir? No. Okay. Do you recognize the documents marked as Exhibit 11? Yes. Okay. Exhibit 11 identifies, what is it? It's an uh, email communication between uh, Gene and Joseph. Okay, and who are Gene and Joseph? Uh, office manager and director of IT. Okay, and they were discussing specifically about how they were going to change passwords, right? Yeah, they, they said, you know why we're changing passwords. Right. And what time was that? 12 o'clock. Okay, and what time did you change passwords? Uh, later on in the day. Okay, well you told me earlier that Mr. Bucci had emailed Sean to find out if there was anything going on. Did you see that? He called him. Okay. I don't remember if that was the exact date could have been the day before that. I think it was the day before that because I was at a, uh, in Dade City. Okay, but that email at some point prior references the fact that we're going to change passwords, doesn't it? Correct. Okay, but you just told me that you didn't discuss with anyone the fact that you were going to change passwords. The first day, yes. Okay, so do you think that this email came after the fact? I believe so. Okay, but you just told me before that this all happened one day, that there was a one-day period of time that Mr. Bucci on one day didn't return your phone calls at, because there was a, and he said that he was in a client meeting, and then you called him all day long, is what you told me. Correct. And then you said at the end of the day, you said that you had decided that you were at that point going to cut off his email, correct? Correct. Okay. <coughs> How 
how do you reconcile the story you just told me I don't with that rem- email? I don't remember if that was the exact date or it was Tuesday. So it was a year and a half ago almost. Okay, so it's now your belief that you didn't shut the email off at the end of the day? I changed the password. It could have been maybe 30 minutes, an hour. I don't remember. It was the end of the day. Okay, well, this email is the time. I know that you said that you all didn't maintain server logs, but was the time right on your server? I don't remember. Okay. Do you know if the time was off by, let's call it six hours? I don't recall. You don't know? No. Okay. Well, do you have any reason to believe that the time was off by six hours? I don't recall. Okay. Well, do you think it would have been bizarre for the time on your server to have been off by six hours? Check to the form. You can answer. I don't believe so. You don't believe it was off by six hours? No. Okay. Well, so I'm asking, how do you reconcile that email on November 9th, 2011, where you say, you know why we're changing passwords with the story you just told me that you turn it off at the end of the day? This was a communication between two other people. I have no idea why they would write that. And I don't know if that was the exact date that it happened. I don't have that those paperwork in front of me. So I don't remember the exact date. I believe it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I don't recall exactly. Okay. Well, did you have previous conversations with Ms. Dykus about how it was you intended to change the email passwords and you were just looking for something to you could use as cover to do that? No. Well, then why does Ms. Dykus say, you know why we're changing passwords? Object to the form. Whether it was before or after? I don't know. Not her. Well, this clearly says, you know why we're changing passwords, as if that's something that's going to happen in the future. They may have discussed it. Maybe they came up with the idea, and that's why we changed it at the end of the day. But I don't, that was not a communication between myself and someone else. So I'm not, I can't really say that why they said that they could have came up with the idea and we agreed on it at the end of the day but that's you know communication that was not with me or anyone else well I'm confused because well is Miss Dykus someone in your knowledge who has well let's strike that um, You would agree that on November 9th, 2011, at 12.05 p.m., Ms. Dykus sent an email to Mr. Thomas that said, with regard to Mr. Bucci, you know why we're changing passwords, right? Check to the form. Can you repeat the question? Do you have any reason to believe that that is not an email sent by Ms. Dykus to Mr. Thomas? No, it is an email sent by her. Okay. And do you recall having reviewed that email previously? No. Now... Is there any document that you could review that would refresh your recollection as to what day specifically it was that you changed the password? I'd have to look through my emails. Okay. What would be reflected in your emails? The day that I was that I was emailing and calling Bucci, that would be the day that it would have happened. 